All right, good morning. Welcome to the Thursday Thread. Andy Lockwood here with CPA business guru, Neil Gilmet. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Andy. How are you today? Doing, doing well. And today we're going to talk about attracting a flood of clients. So uh, we're going to switch roles here. Neil, you're going to take away and do your best Mike Wallace impersonation and interview yeah. me. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, today, we're going to feature my friend, my partner, my mentor, and my student, Andy Lockwood. <laughs> now, <clears throat> a lot of you have used the tools that I have to build business. And the, as Andy said, the bottom half of the funnel is what my expertise is, and you all know that it is. Uh, I'm pretty good on the top half of the funnel, but I can't shine Andy's shoes when it comes down to his ability to funnel, use the top half of that funnel. And we, I like to say, as you all know, I like to start things with results. So the results that Andy's creating with his marketing, and please let's differentiate marketing from closing. The results that Andy is creating with his marketing are between 30 and 60 qualified, high profile, high profit potential leads a month. That's 30 to 60 leads a month. Frankly, there's not a CPA listening to me to us today that could even begin to handle that many leads. But that's the number of leads Andy's generating and their leads that he sells anywhere from $3,500 to $25,000, which are fees that you guys would love to be charging. So today I'm gonna to ask Andy, how did he do it? How did this all come about? Um, was this just a flash in a pan? Is this a silver bullet? How does this all work, Andy? <laughs> Well, that's a lot to talk about. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. So, that, so, so, just to back up a little bit. So, so, the, in terms of like figuring out how to bring in clients, right? Like you, you, you talk about how there's four parts to any business, and the, the most important initial stage is getting a, uh, a, a a lead flow of potential <laughs> clients, and then converting them. That's the second part. That's what every business the needs. The phrase I like to use is efficiently creating the proper opportunities, a steady stream of the proper opportunities in the marketplace. Yeah. So um, I won't I won't get into the boring details of how I uh, how I started this this uh, learning journey in uh, in around 2000, but it was basically from attending a um, a conference that that kind of turned my light on to like, huh, there's there's really more to meets the eye of what this guy who's giving the conference was actually doing. I was attending a, a, a continuing education. I don't know if I ever told you this. I was continuing, att attending a continuing education um, uh, program f uh, as a lawyer with a friend of mine, um, Seth, who's also an attorney. This is back in uh, 2000. And what it, it was supposed to be a, a class on practice management. But the whole thing was what I thought was a thinly veiled sales pitch to sign up for the two thousand dollar boot camp, but it wasn't so thinly veiled because he he closed you know at least half if not three quarters of, of that room, dropping all these hints and all these things. I was like, wow, that is manipulative. But I want to learn how to do that. I wasn't even paying attention to the substance so much of the of the class. <laughs> so so um so that sort of sparked me on a journey to uh, start attending direct marketing conferences and learning the the principles of of direct marketing which uh, I, I understand now have been around since at least the Civil War and apply those principles to what I do day to day in order to you know, create this system or machine that um, generates the types of numbers that you mentioned. I, uh, yesterday, to, to prepare for this, I looked at, um, th there's two ways that people set up appointments with me. There's, and there's two different forms depending on what offer I'm giving. So on the main form that I, I use for people to fill out applications for me, we generated 321 leads in 2020, and, and we're recording this you know middle of December, and I'm still getting a few more people like that. So I think with with the other the other application, which I forgot, actually forgot to check, there might have been another um, 40 to 50. I'm, I'm I'm guessing. So anyway, well well over 350 for the year. That is. <clears throat> Phenomenal. There isn't a, there isn't anybody listening to this or that will listen would and would not want to uh, create and these are qualified leads. Want to create three hundred and fifty qualified leads. <clears throat> 
and the if you closed them all, you couldn't even handle a business. Well, I have a hard. I mean, it's it, it is. I I recognize that in the abstract, it seems like you know everyone would want something like this. Uh, I, of course, you know, once I, you know, do one of these campaigns, I'm like, great, I got all these leads. I, and now I'm like, all right, I have to talk to 47 people now. What am I, you know, <laughs> that's, I'm not really looking forward to that. So, you know, that's more process stuff, which is uh, one of the other parts of the of the business that you talk about and you've helped me with, uh, frankly. But it, yeah, it is, it is a lot. I mean, if you close 10%, that's, that's a lot of, of people. And, you know, typically with, high, with uh, my high fee um, services, we're, we're closing close to 33% and anywhere from 30% to you know, maybe 34, 35% on any given month. One thing it allows you to do, it allows you to skim the cream off the top. It, you, the, the, the business that you do pick up is the highest quality because you are, you are pre-qualifying so much in both the things that you use to get them to reach out to you and the processes that you put in place afterwards actually qualifies people out and lets the cream rise to the top. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big believer in that because um, I'm very guarded about how I spend my time, uh, as, as we've talked about, um, and, and you are also. And uh, I do whatever I can to pre-qualify them before they, um, they actually sit with me. So they fill an application, and once they've gotten that, then they get an automated uh, series of uh, four emails that kind of describes different aspects of, of our process in, in, in the way of highlighting the benefits or the results, you know, client testimonials, things like that. But they also know what the fees are uh, before they book and we reinforce that. And so I'm trying to, you know, explain all that to them. So that does a lot of my legwork for me, you know, to, to pre-qualify them and, and not waste my time. But, you know, of course, uh, occasionally we get no shows, occasionally we get unqualified people filtering through, but, I, you know, I'd, I'd say I probably catch 90% of all that stuff before I sit down and talk to them. And a 33% closing ratio is a nice closing ratio on this type, on this type of direct marketing. Um, you are really the master of this stuff. And <clears throat> the key is, is that you have multiple levels of tools and processes to constantly qualify out those that are unqualified. So by the time they get to you, they're pretty well qualified. Can you do that for any business? Um, so I'll, I'll explain how, how I do it. And and I don't, I don't know if um, that's something that I can do for any business, but I, I feel that any advice giver with a little bit of help, you know, if, if they choose to engage with us, um, can do it themselves. Because I, I feel that... Um, no one, none of us knows our business uh, worse than anyone else. You know, so right. you're, any anyone you work with, you're always going to be the the expert for, for your business. But in terms of getting out that message, finding that message, finding your ideal client, and the systems to extract that and and get that out in the world, um, you know, we we can help with that. But it's really the individual's message and unique value proposition and all those types of things that that you teach. I'm working with a new client that just started out in California, CPA, referral client. I asked him what his ideal client was. He couldn't answer that question. Right. So the first thing he has to do is identify his ideal client and why it's ideal. And he has to do that from the perspective of what business does he actually want to build going down the road. And I guarantee you, a lot of the people that are listening here have not done that. Yeah. Yeah, it's foundational. I mean, you have to do that type of thinking first. And which means you have to know the right questions to ask first before you can <clears throat> construct a marketing campaign in order to attract those types of people that you do want. What I learned from you is that you you focus this your package that the things that you do is almost like building a house. Before you can start putting the sheetrock up, you have to have stud walls. Before you can put stud walls up, you have to start with a footing that goes underneath the foundation. You put the footing in and you let that dry and then you put the foundation in. Once you put the foundation in, you can begin to build the structure. When you begin to build the structure, you can refine the structure until you have the finished product structure that's ready to go. And that's exactly what it takes to do what you did. And when I thought about it, it also took the same thing for me to do what I did. I just wasn't conscious of it like you are now right. and like I am now. Right. <clears throat> so the key more importantly is that We've got a conscious structure 
that starts with the 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 footing, the foundation, and then the structure itself. But once you build it, it's built. It's not like you're constantly going out and trying to bring clients in. All you're doing is tweaking it and fine tuning it, from what I've seen, uh, so that it's more effective. Yeah, I mean, so so one of the byproducts of that, um, which is something you mentioned before, uh, is also just knowing that um, you know plus or minus five percent of what my next thirty days, sixty days, ninety days are going to look like. If I need to ramp things up, like you said, or tweak the marketing, I, I can do that. If I need to shut it down, which I've done a few times this year, including uh, last month, um, I, I, I can do that also. Just you know, it's like adjusting a, a dial. But it is it is work. I mean, I'm not. I don't want anyone to think that I'm uh, I, I'm trying to claim that I have a magic wand or something. There's a there is a, a substantial amount of upfront work that um, that that will that sets the system in place, which, which I can definitely talk about. But once it's there, once you've done that upfront work, it can run. I would never say on autopilot because I don't really believe you know. Uh, any, any machine, any car, you know, there's no such thing as uh, autopilot. You've got to still put gas in the tank. You've got to, you know, look at the gauges and all that. But um, it's, a, it's a lot easier than wondering where's my next piece of business coming from. I, I don't have those. I haven't had those types of worries in uh, easily three or four years. Probably longer. But probably longer than that. Yeah. <clears throat> and what's interesting about it is, is that most, and I've learned from it, too. And I've been in this same, I've been in business for 50 years, mostly selling and closing, etc. And I'm learning a tremendous amount what I didn't know. You went in another direction. You've been taking seminars on this. Yeah. Uh, you've been flying around the country and taking seminars on this from some of the best marketers in the world. Who are some of the marketers you, you studied under? Uh, Dan Kennedy is one of the greatest, uh, influences. Uh, he, he led, so, so just going back to my initial, uh, experience on the, on the buying side, not the selling side of direct marketing. Um, the guy who ran the seminar kept mentioning this book. Uh, w there was only one of these at the time called the E-Myth, E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Since then, since he realized that there was, he was onto a good thing. He's written the E-Myth Revisited, the E-Myth for doctors, the E-Myth for uh, hairdressers. <laughs> I don't know, about 20 of them. But um, that that's not really a marketing book, but it was a foundational book in terms of saying like, look, there are three roles in any business. And the most important role is the shareholder or the strategist or the marketing function. And that's what you should be spending 80% of your time on. I was like eighty percent. Like holy crap, that's so, that's so much. How do I do that? And then I started going to different conferences. So I came across um, Kennedy. I, uh, I I love a lot of the um, old time, you know, people who have not been around, who, who are no longer with us, you know, from the fifties and the sixties. Uh, so it's I don't re I, at this point um, I'm pretty heavy heavily into the um, Dan Kennedy world. He's kind of taken a step back, but he's got a few people. But I would recommend anyone to Google him and, and check out what they call magnetic marketing. Well, basically speaking, what I'm hearing from you is that you got yourself a PhD in direct marketing. Uh, you, you, should be, you, sh you actually should be calling me Dr. Lockwood. Um, yeah, just I, like, I hear just it. Like, just like Jill Biden. You did get, yeah, right, just like Jill Biden. Right. Um, She's a lot prettier than you are, Andy. I mean, not, <laughs> but uh, no, you you basically created the equivalent of a PhD in direct marketing. It took you a lot of years to learn what you've learned, and you built a marketing machine for your business. Now, once you built the machine, yeah, like the car, if you build a vehicle, which is what it is, it's a vehicle to create leads. If you build a new car. You you said it. You you have to put you have to put fuel in it. You have to wash it. You have to check the tire pressure. You got to maintain it in top notch condition because if you maintain that vehicle in top notch condition, it continues to take you where you want to go. The biggest problem I've seen, not only with other people and not with my clients, but with myself, is I don't know even where to begin. Yeah to start building that machine. And that's where you have the PhD and you, you've studied it enough to know 
what are the options and tools available? I'm just going to use the, uh, the tool that we're on right now for doing the broadcasting. I never even heard of these kinds of tools, yet you've got something that it's a broadcast studio. Uh, you've shown me a whole bunch of other tools that you've identified in the marketplace that when you put those tools together, they work in sync. Just like the engine in the Cadillac works in sync with the transmission, works in sync with the rear end, turns the tires on the wheels and the brakes are there to slow it down. All those systems work together. <clears throat> That's what is missing in the marketplace. That's what I don't know how to do. That's what I've been learning from you. And anybody that's out there that wants to talk about this, you should talk to Andy, not to me, because he knows so much more about this. He already has the machine. And one thing I'd like to say is that I've learned from you, there are no magic bullets. If you're going to build this machine, it takes time and energy. There are two ways to approach it. You can spend 20 some odd years like Andy did, attending seminars, learning, exploring, looking, etc. And you will build a machine. Or you can shortcut that and talk to Andy and have him help you put it together. And anybody that does that wants to build that, you should definitely have a phone conversation with Andy. You can apply for a, a, a workshop with him. There are workshops you can attend. But if you'd like to build a marketing machine, uh, Andy's gone through everything that's out there. I've learned so much. Uh, I mean, I hear, I hear terminology coming from you about this tool or that tool. I got to say, stop. I don't even know what that is. Help me understand. And you've got those tools and you've looked at eight or 10 tools in each area and you've picked out the best ones for you. Um, does that mean they're going to be the best ones for everybody else? Right. Maybe, maybe not, but you're so far ahead. And as I said, I've been doing this for 50 years and I'm a neophyte compared to what you are in this direct marketing. So anybody that's thinking about building a marketing machine in their business, you need to talk to Andy about it. You know, whether you do anything with us or not, it doesn't matter. Talk to him. We'll be able to help you some way. Yeah. Um, what are some of the tools that you use? What are some of the, the, the things that you use to do this? So um, I think it's important to look at the, at the strategic stuff, the high-level stuff first before we get into the tactics. And um, where, where I think a lot of people fall down when they run ads or they respond to the, you know, the yellow pages salesman or the equivalent, you know, whatever that is today, probably the Google uh, SEO guy or um, the LinkedIn salesman or, you know, whatever is um, they get they get bogged down in, uh, well, first we're going to do this post, or we're going to run this ad, and then we're going to do these posts and whatever, but they don't understand what that is supposed to do or what the, what the best case is in terms of results. It's not just posting. It's not just tools. It, it's really more about um, understanding that <clears throat> the, the best way to uh, – to, to market in my in my experience if you are an advisor and you, and you and you charge high fees is not to sell something it's really more to offer value and explain here is the benefit to you so so that could look like doing a workshop um, posting a video like we do or like I do for my own business on on my own Facebook page um, it could be offering a free report. It could be writing a book. I've written a bunch, um, whatever, just a special report. It could, it could be anything, but you need to establish that trust and that uh, rapport and that understanding and, in fact, to in indoctrinate your prospective client that, okay, this is uh, what you didn't understand. You know, and you, as you say, you bring them into an awareness of what they lack, and then you make an offer, and that offer is – in most cases, what I would say is, here's how you can reach out to me for a free consultation. I wouldn't call it that, but but that's that's basically the the big sale. So it's not we've been around you know since 1923 and we return phone calls promptly, like you see on you know most of the websites and marketing collateral um, that you've showed me for for accountants. It's more like there's seven secrets to slashing your taxes in any presidential. Uh, uh, administration special report reveals all or how, you know, how to beat the Biden tax hikes, you know, free report or something, you know, something like that. I'm doing a presentation. You could, you could call it that. And then once you've gotten people to raise their hands and say, yes, I'm interested. And 
you've collected their information. So it's two steps. One is attracting their information, their interest, and the second part is following up with them. So it's really two parts. I mean, it's it's actually very simple, and it's not even deceptively simple. It's it's really that simple. Give them something free of value, and then follow up with them. In my case, that follow up will happen for years because I've uh, spent years writing and tweaking and and extending more and more emails and mailers and things that happen in a in a sequence after they've um, raised their hand and said, yes, I'm interested, I want to talk to you, or yes, I want your free information, and maybe they haven't talked to me. But that's it's really two steps. It's get their attention and follow up. It also has to start with that unique value proposition. Yeah. If you haven't defined the value that you bring to the marketplace that differentiates you from your competition, right. you're going to still build business, but it's not going to work anywhere near as well. Yeah, the differentiation does two things. It, it um, explains your value, but it also gets their attention. And in today's world, more than 10 years ago and 20 years ago, et cetera, it's much harder to get people's attention. You know, I've seen all these uh, people claiming that our attention spans are shorter than a goldfish is, which is nine seconds. Yeah, I don't know. If, <laughs> I love hearing that stuff. I don't know if it's true. But um, you really do have to give them the equivalent of, of clickbait or uh, a New York Post type of headline. Uh, and, you know, some, some that I use in my own practice is um, how to hide your money from the financial aid office. You know, that, that's a, a one that seems to get a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of attention when I track it. Or uh, how to slash college costs by fifty two point two percent, even if you think you can't possibly qualify. Uh, or how to afford college without scrimping on your your lifestyle or mortgaging your retirement or your house up to your eyeballs and without selling a kidney. You know, th things that get people's attention, but there are also messages about them, about either something that could benefit them or something that can care, scare the crap out of them or both. And I, I modulate those to, to get people to raise their hands. They give me their information and then I follow up. And it's real. it's really... Like I said, it's not even deceptively simple. It's it's that simple. It's two steps. Going back to the basics that I learned years ago, Tony Robbins said it. 40 years ago, I bought his first tapes. People either move toward pleasure or away from pain. And you just described two scenarios where you're either helping them move toward pleasure, it's something that they want, or move away from the pain of something that they don't want. Mm. And that those two basic premises are involved in that. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of those are the foundational building blocks, but you've taken those blocks and put them together in such a way that you built, I'm not going to call it a perpetual motion machine, but it's not that far from being a perpetual motion machine. I mean, if, it, if you right. drop down to 300 to 250 leads a year, that's way more than anybody that's listening today to today is getting. I guarantee you that right now, there's nobody out there that would, that's listening. That is is, a, is listening to our shows. Nobody out there is guaranteed is pulling up three fifty or three hundred and fifty qualified leads a year. Nobody. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, it is. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff that runs automatically. I mean, it, it is. Um, it is semi perpetual, I guess, um, because I have a lot of um, stuff out there that's just evergreen. You know, meaning that I'll say here, uh, I'm running a workshop on Thursday. You can here, here's the uh, link. You can re register here, and it looks like a live workshop about between you and me and anyone watching this. Um, it is a previously recorded, it was live, but it looks like, you know, from the chat that's going on and the conversation, you know, it, it looks like um, it's, it's actually happening. So I may, I may have one people, uh, one person attending the, you know, Erzatz uh, live <laughs> workshop, the faux workshop. Um, and I, and I see their comments coming back in on email, you know, when I check my email the next day uh, and because the, they think they're there live it may look like there's 96 people there or 240 something people there um, who were there at one point, but um, they are getting, you know, they're attending these workshops and getting the same offer to book a, a call with me. So that is working without me actually having to physically deliver that workshop over and over again. I, I told you this also, another, another thing is, and, and th these are like advanced, you know, type, types of manifestations of that simple two-step system, but, um, and they require work to set up, but then once they're set up, they, they can run. I told you this, um, I'm doing a presentation tonight on something totally different. I've only done this once before, and that was 12 months ago, to um, offer a way to train people to become college advisors. You know, not in my, not in Long Island, but in um, uh, other areas. 
I have a certification program that I put 10 people in last year and now I'm trying to do it, do it again. And, um, I have, I think 69 people that are registered so far. I'll probably pick up a few more. We'll probably get usually about 80% of the total registrants to show up and I'm going to show up tonight at seven o'clock. I'm going to do a little opening and then I'll say, okay, I'm going to switch to my slides now. And what I'm doing there is switching to something I pre-recorded my presentation, which let, which runs for about an hour. So um, it saves me the, you know, I guess the nervousness, which not, or the or the energy. You know, I want to reserve the energy for the end of that, where I can come on for, for questions. So there's all these tools that you don't have to avail yourself of right away. And, and, and to, to me, it's starting out getting something that works, a simple two step. But then gradually, you can, you know, as as you need to, you can build it out and reinvest more if you need to to get it running. Um, I don't know what the best tools are out there. Like, like you said, I know it works for me. I'm aware that there are other tools that are out there. Some are more expensive, some are less expensive, but I just don't bother switching because of the bright shiny object because it's working. So I, I try to avoid those temptations to switch and just focus on the boring at this point, uh, old fashioned blocking and tackling. What I found Andy, and, and this is gonna hold true with marketing, um, I'm working as a, you know, I work with other, among other things, mostly CPAs, but there's a reluctance for people to invest the upfront time and energy, yeah. to master anything. I just sent out a training package to a new client and he said, there are 23 page in it, pages in this. What should I look at first? I said, every word of it. Yeah. Page one. <laughs> Get yourself a highlighter and start reading and looking, and then we'll discuss it as we go along. They're all looking for that silver bullet. They think that there's an easy way right. to generate business, and there is no easy way. There right. are no silver bullets. There are no, just none. But you can build the system that you're building a little bit at a time. It should take – if we wanted to take a CPA and help them build a tool, a, 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 a funnel of leads in a targeted market like you have, what do you guess if they were willing to put time and energy into it? What type of time frame do you think it would take to build a running machine that requires just maintenance to put that together to help a CPA do that or anybody else do that? Yeah, I, I think you can get something up and running within a matter of weeks. I'll call, call 30 days um, just, just to start, you know, uh, starting to attract leads. But there's there's going to be this process of calibration that's going to be ongoing, you know, probably for another couple of months. Um, it depends. It depends on everyone's you know, particular situation, who their ideal client is, you know, figuring out where to reach them. What they need value proposition, who they're targeting. Yeah, but but if I said to someone who had never done this before, like like you did when we when like you and I were doing before we did this show initially, I was like, okay, well, tomorrow we're going to uh, go live, um, and then we'll see what happens. You know, that's you, you got to do that before you're ready. You're, you're really ready to and to sort of get your uh, get, get your feet wet type of thing. Um, that can be done in instantly. I just wouldn't rush it for the sake of rushing it. But uh, it doesn't it's, it's not if you're doing if you're starting with the, with the, the I guess, the uh, fundamental understanding that you're going to keep it simple and you just want to get something, you know, working and maybe it's going to your own database of clients. And making them an offer, hey, I'm doing something, uh, a presentation on you know potential tax changes for next year. Here's how to you know make sure 2021 um, you, you keep <laughs> you keep as much as you possibly can in your pocket instead of giving away to the tax man. You know you can you could do that right There's away. A bunch of things that can be done. Yeah, but it's low hanging fruit. I would go for the low hanging fruit first. Yeah, start engaging my of current course. database and, and get referrals. And the referrals are the way to go. The referrals are, are ter terrific. And as you're building this machine, you continue to build it a little bit at a time. By the time two or three years goes to, down, after two or three years, your machine should be up and running and pumping out a steady stream of leads that you want. Yeah. And I think that's a minor investment to create the kind of results that you can see. Because I've seen firms for 40 years that – are just not doing that. They're not seeing those kind of leads, big, small, medium, the big four. They're just not generating those kind of leads. Well, they're spending time on like logo redesign, right? You, sh you show me uh, one of your client sites and they, they had this whole, uh, it, was, it was like a 
soliloquy on the meaning of their new of their new logo. I couldn't believe I thought it was a joke. That's what they probably spent twenty thousand dollars on with their with their consultants. Whereas more than that. If 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 they want if they want yeah, I, I'm out of touch with that stuff. But but if they really wanted to, it's not it's not years. It's it's really a matter of a few weeks to start getting results, and then you can continue to to build it out. But getting back to the low hanging fruit um, thing, you know, the more you communicate with your own database first, the more leads you'll get from referrals, and that's typically the the place to start. But, but instead of going out to to get new people out in the marketplace who don't know you from Adam, I would, I would start with my own database. Um, something that we do in, in our, in our practice is we do uh, each month, we do a, here's what you need to be doing now, uh, a live presentation on Facebook on a special, you know, group page for our, uh, me and my wife do this for our, for our current clients. And we have, I think um, in that Facebook group, we might have 500 or 600 active, uh, people and we might get 20 to 40 showing up, you know, depending on what's happening during the school year, but we transcribe that and we mail it. And we, so, so it's not just creating all this new content. It's also repurposing content. It's much more efficient. And those, you can do that for very cheap or, or for free. Um, but some people get something in the mail. They're more likely to open that than they are to go into Facebook. Some people aren't on Facebook. So, you know, so there's, you want to get in touch with people as much as you possibly can who, who know, like, and trust you already. And that will generate business too. You, uh, we, we started, I started using somebody that is putting things on LinkedIn and Facebook for me. What? Three months ago, maybe. Yeah. And it's already uh, generating results. It's already yeah. generating calls and results. And all we're doing is putting some repeats of other things and just just getting what I do onto Facebook and LinkedIn on a regular basis. And a lot of it has to do with asking questions. The questions create a curiosity. And when I'm thinking back on what you said today, one of the terms and phrases you've heard me use is building an act of willingness. And that's what your process does. It builds an act of willingness. Uh, we've got David Goodman coming in. It took me years to develop a culture for the firm and get buy-in from those who believed in the culture. We developed a plan based on how we wanted to help our clients. The power of our culture allowed us to focus on who we are and who we want to work with and how. Yes, you have, David, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm pleased to have been part of that. Um, you, you've really come a long, long way, um, and you're well-recognized in your area of the, the, the country. And your specialty with dentists, you're well recognized as an expert. In fact, I remember having a conversation with you, David, when you decided, gee, I like working with dentists. And great, let's make that a niche. Hmm. And now you become a famous person where they ask you to speak at dental science society conventions all over the country. That's great. And, that, and that brings leads in the door because one of, one of the other things that uh, Andy talks about and I talk about is you become recognized as an expert and a famous person in the business of dentistry. You don't know how to drill and fill, but you need you, you certainly know how to teach those who drill and fill how to make and keep more money by drilling and filling. That's great. So David, you're one of the success stories and I and I, I love having worked with you. In fact, we're still working together on things. Um, so coming back full circle, Andy, if anybody out there is interested in exploring building a marketing machine, how would they go about it? What's the next step? I just drop a note right here on the, in the comment section and, uh, and we'll, we'll get in touch. Good. Make it easy. Yeah. Good. Well, it looks like we're out of time. So I want to thank everybody that listened and participated and, and thank you to some other people that are writing in. Um, but we're out of time folks. And we're going to have to sign off. And uh, the one thing I want to leave you with is that, I talk about a thread of continuity. There's a thread of continuity in the stuff that you do, in the different aspects of what you do. There's a thread of continuity that goes right back to your unique value proposition. So it's not just in doing the business, it's also in getting the business, that thread of continuity counts. And, and delivering the service. And of course, in delivering it. All the way through. You have to walk when you walk, you talk. Yeah. All righty. 
thank you all very much. And you can find this again. It'll be on LinkedIn, I think, and on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, call us if you call us if you need us or email. Let us know. Great. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Great. Coming we'll up. See, okay. We'll see you in a week. <laughs>